Hi, Larry at Hagemeisters. We've got a customer with a 2000 Ford diesel with an alternator trouble. We're going to check it out and see which way we have to go to fix it. This is a high mile, 212,000 mile truck. First thing we want to do is check the batteries and connections, and then we'll check the charging system. So the batteries uh, in the truck look clean, connections look clean. Their older batteries are 17, but let's get them checked out. The first thing you want to do is unhook one negative so that you're not checking both batteries at the same time. So we'll do that and we'll do a test on each battery. Okay, let's get this off. Okay, so we're gonna do our test here on our battery. It says it's about an 850, so our static voltage is good, 12.69, so that's good. So we'll go to test, let's get this up to about 800 and see where that comes in. So it's 690, it's not 100% as new, but again, it's a little bit old, but not quite old enough to condemn. It's still got enough cranking power, so let's check the other battery. Okay, we're 12.65 here, so this battery's fully charged. Um, let's go to the test. Also, it's a 17 like the other battery. Go up to about 800, see where we're at. And do a test there. And so this one's 750. It's a little bit higher CCA than that one. Uh, and that's fine. That battery is closer to the starter, probably gets a little more pull. Customer could swap batteries if they want. Uh, but again, 750, it's not condemnable. So our batteries were okay, our connections are good. So let's go ahead and check the alternator next. So the next test we're going to do is make sure that we have key power to the alternator and battery power all the time. So, uh, yeah, there's our voltage, 11.9 at the battery post. Now let's unhook this. Make sure we got power at that. Yep, there's power there and power there. So our green and red wire is the key on power and our orange wire is the battery sense wire. So the regulator needs that orange wire to know where to set the voltage. So with the high miles that this truck has, that could be an issue in that this orange wire, wherever it goes in the harness, if it doesn't see a good battery power, then this alternator will overcharge or search where to set the voltage. So that's kind of a problem. The other problem is, is that this uh, green and red wire tracer, which is your key on wire, which is working right at this moment, it can be a problem in that if it quits working, the alternator won't charge. That's why we promote the one wire alternator because that can be very unreliable with this kind of high miles on the truck. So let's go ahead and plug that back in Make sure it's connected good, and we'll start it up and do a system check. So this is our dash in the, in the truck here, the 212,000 miles. Let's turn the key on. We got our voltmeter. I do not see a battery light. That's some concern because we've got, uh, we do have key power at the alternator, but we don't have a battery light in here, and those are tied together, so I'm not sure what's happening there. But again, back at these voltmeters, you got 8 or 18, and in between that, there's no number. So we really don't know what, what we got. So this is one of our audible voltmeters that we sell uh, that is available. Because these vehicles don't really have a great way to tell that they're charging. Again, back to that voltmeter on the dash, it's 8 or 18. There's no scale between there. So let's start it up and see what's going on and see how it, how it looks here. So our crank voltage went to 10.6, which is good, um, but it doesn't appear to this charging. So as that voltage drops, we still don't have any charge.
So this is the audible feature in our in our voltmeter in that as you're driving down the road, if that starts doing that, that means that your system has quit charging and your, your batteries are going to die, so you need to do something about it. Without that feature, we have no idea whether this thing is working or not because that voltmeter on the dash doesn't give us any indication where that voltage is at. So we have did our uh, battery test, our voltage test, we've checked our connections, pretty much determined this alternator is no good, so let's go ahead and get that changed. So this is the uh, 6G that came off the truck. It's a smaller diameter alternator, about a 95 amp. We're going to replace it with one of our one wire 130 amps. Let's take a look at that. So here's our replacement alternator. And as you can see, it's physically larger in size. So we want to show you how we address that on the truck. So it's basically just a one wire hookup, one hot wire on the back, and that's all there is to it. When you pull the unit out of the box, uh, there's a tag in there that indicates where to hook up the alternator, and on the other side is a recommendation of using our audible voltmeter. These alternators, because they're larger physical size, on the diesels that the alternator is on the driver's side, the saddle that this fits into uh, isn't quite the right size, and the alternator actually hits the bottom of that saddle. And I've seen people grind that out, and, and that's okay too, but when you buy the alternator from us, we include this, this uh, nylon bushing kit that will raise the alternator up to keep it from hitting in the bottom of that saddle. Let me show you how that works. Okay, here's the saddle I'm talking about that the alternator sets in. And in the base of this right here is where these alternators hit because they're larger physical size, being that they're 130 amp. So when we try to set the alternator in there, you can see that the surfaces aren't, aren't flat because it's, it's um, hitting the bottom of that alternator. And that's where our spacer kit comes in handy to keep that up so it doesn't hit the bottom. So, with the high miles in this truck, we're really wanting to go to the one wire because, again, back to this plug, the whole system depends on working from this plug. And you can see these wires have been moved and twisted somewhat. So I'm having a problem trusting that connection. So we can either just put it back here and tape it off out of the way so it's not a problem because all we really need is that one hot wire on the back. So again, being a one wire system, all we do is hook up this one hot wire, which I have attached. And factory original wire is pretty heavy duty so we get that on there and make sure that's good and tight, and that's all you need to do. So again, this, this system, because of the way we do the belt, and we raise it up a little bit, has no factor in the belt tension. Actually, we'll probably give you a little more, but you can see the, the spacers here holding this up just right. And belt looks like it's good to go, so let's give it a test. Again, our dash, uh, the voltmeter, I guess, you know, not being able to have a number in between there, that's, that's reading about 14 volts. But, but again, it's unreliable because there's no scale. There's, the scale's only on the top and bottom, 8 and 18. So let's do a test on it now. We've got our voltmeter plugged in. Let's do key on. Wait for our glow plugs to heat up. Now it's showing low voltage because our glow plugs are working. And there's our light. So, so the voltmeter is 
a little past center, but we can't tell. Now it just started charging. We're 12.6 and that voltage will climb. It stopped beeping, so we're 13.2. So we're, we're uh, just right close to 14, 14.1, which is perfect. Headlights on, 13.9, no problem. So it looks like it's working fine. 14.4 out here at the battery, about 14 in on the, in on the dash. So uh, the truck's all set to go. Okay, thanks for watching. We got this one all fixed. I hope that answers some questions about our one wire alternators and how they really help out these high mile trucks and keep them charging. There you are, stunner, unlike any other. of a dream